cesar los bombardeos sobre los campamentos de las FARC. Security and Defense Expert Alejo Vargas considers this latest decision as highly significant as air strikes have been one of the main attack strategies used by the government against the FARC in the past 10 years. If the government stops using airstrikes from one month, that evidently means that the suspension of the most lethal weapon they have been using, and that is an important step taken by the government in the direction of de-escalating the confrontation. Farmers' movements and rural sectors have also reacted positively to the announcement, as they are the ones that know all too well the enormous damages that airstrikes inflict on civilians. It results in collateral damage on the rural population living in the conflict regions, resulting in damaging of houses, losses of animals and crops, and all the terror that airstrikes create among civilians, especially children. So the decision to suspend airstrikes has been received with joy. For analysts, this is the first concrete response from the government to the FARC's unilateral ceasefire implemented in December last year, but it is also a decision that brings the greatly expected end of hostilities one step closer. So with this latest measure of halting airstrikes on the FARC, plus the recently agreed demining operation, as well as the technical commission for peace being underway, what we would expect is that over the course of the next two or three, maximum four months, a verifiable bilateral ceasefire could be reached. In addition to the progresses in the peace talks, an advisory commission for peace has been appointed, bringing together people from different political opinions like Clara Lopez, president of the leftist opposition party. We have many differences with the government and with the, the president's policy regarding economic issues, social issues, uh, the management of the state. But of course, in the peace process, uh, we have always uh, given our most active support. As social organizations have welcomed the decision taken by the government, they have also called on the president to finally start negotiations with the second largest guerrilla, the ELN. From Bogotá, Natalia Margarita, Telesur. It began with broad sanctions in December against Venezuelan officials guilty of human rights abuses. Now the Obama administration has declared the country poses a national security threat to the United States and produced a list of sanctioned individuals. Obviously there are certain individuals who met the criteria to be named on this list. Um, and this gives the president the authority moving forward, if needed, uh, to name additional individuals. So far, seven Venezuelan officials will no longer be allowed to enter the United States nor do business with American firms. Surprising news for activists who have been following the situation since early last year. Declaring a national emergency for, na for national security of the U.S. about what's going on in Venezuela, that just really doesn't make any sense. The executive order issued on Monday implements and further expands upon the Venezuelan Defense of Human Rights and Civil Society Act of 2014. The U.S. government says those named undermined democratic institutions, were involved in political corruption, or suppressed human rights and expression. It's very, very broad what they can say. I mean, when you include corruption, um, I think that you could... Uh, per, apply that standard to almost any country in the world, including the United States. And the, the author of the sanctions bill, Bob Menendez, he's, he's being indicted for corruption. The announcement comes just over a week after Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro announced new visa requirements for U.S. travelers to Venezuela and barred U.S. officials like Menendez and Dick Cheney from acquiring visas to the country. The main threat is the power and the influence they have over, over other countries that are trying to find their place in the political spectrum and that the, this country fears the influence that Venezuela has on those other countries. Meanwhile, Foreign Minister Delcy Rodriguez declared on Twitter that Venezuela's government has called for immediate consultations with its highest diplomat in the United States. Alexandra Hall, Telesur, Washington. Commencing this Thursday in the Argentine capital, the International Forum of Emancipation and Equality seeks to think and rethink the emancipative processes reshaping Latin America. I really hope this forum gives us the opportunity to look at Latin America with a Bolivarian and Guevarist perspective, from Patagonia up to the Great Lakes, where there are communities of Salvadorians, Nicaraguans and Mexicans. We are one great nation. Organized by Argentina's Ministry of Culture, the forum, which spans across three days, will analyze the region's social, economic and political development since the turn of the millennium, also denouncing the increasing assault on its democratically elected governments at the hands of U.S. imperialism. It's very important that when there are moments of an intromission 
visible, totalmente visible. Como it is very important that when ahora, there is clear interference, as we have now, we can all come together from our different points of view and regions from our different subcontinent to reject such interference in all its forms. Venezuelan political analyst Vladimir Acosta says this forum is a fantastic opportunity for Latin Americans to renew their commitment with the integration of Latin America, a concept recovered and placed back on the agenda by the late Venezuelan president, Hugo Chávez Frías. The problems our countries face, Venezuela, Ecuador, Bolivia, Argentina, in any one of those countries, is a problem for all other Latin American countries. Press releases, political statements, expressing solidarity are important, but not enough, because what we need are, are the combative, conscious mobilizations of the people, of the sectors that have been benefited from these political achievements. They must come out to defend and guarantee that these achievements will not be stripped away from them. The future of Latin America depends on this. Noam Chomsky from the U.S., Piedad Córdoba from Colombia, Camila Vallejo from Chile, Emir Sader from Brazil, and Axel Kisilov of Argentina are just some of the individuals scheduled to participate in this historic forum with an expected attendance in the thousands. From Buenos Aires, Leo Politico Uti, Telesur. Gazan residents have expressed fears that the Islamic State group will expand their actions into the Palestinian territories in the past few days after a Palestinian citizen of Israel was executed by the extremists in Syria. On Wednesday, the Islamic State released a video showing a young boy executing 19-year-old Mohammed Msalam, claiming that the victim was identified as spying in the Islamic State camps for Israel. I don't really know if the story behind the execution is true. If he was truly a collaborator with Israel, then he must be punished. The fact that ISIS does not point its weapons at Israel is shameful and it only means that this group was created to spread division and fights between Arab and Muslim countries. In the released video, Musallam was dressed in an orange jumpsuit and identified himself as a collaborator with Israel who was sent to Syria through Turkey. He also added that his father was supporting him in order to spy on ISIS for Israel. However, Musallam's father denied the accusations and comments to AFB, saying that his son was innocent. Most of the political parties in Gaza condemned the execution of Muaz al Kasasba, the Jordanian pilot who was burned to death by ISIS last month. However, this time, and after the execution of the Palestinian young man, all Palestinian political parties refused to comment on the incident. Harazin, Telesu TV. An independent probe has revealed that all the fatal shootings by police which were under review were unlawful. The Prime Minister confirmed this during an address to the nation on Sunday, March 8, 2015, entitled A Distressing Issue to Confront. He said the findings of the report were extremely damning. The report confirms that the blacklists or death lists Referenced by the media, human rights organizations, victims, families, and citizens alike did exist. More alarmingly, the investigators report that all the shootings reviewed were fake encounters staged by the police to legitimize their actions. Further, that the weapons supposedly found on the scene of the alleged extrajudicial killings were from sources other than the victims. The investigators say that the weapons were planted on the scene of the shootings. Cheryl Clark lost her brother to the violence that gripped St. Lucia during the period of police killings from 2009 to 2011 and the police crime fighting initiative known as Operation Restore Confidence. Well, right now I'm looking at straight up a, a demonstration or something because as far as we can see right now, we're not seeing the way out because if the, the Prime Minister already wipes his hands a little bit for the DPP to handle when the DPP already have so much work on their hands, tell me what time and when will we get justice? The investigators have recommended the prosecution of the police officers involved in the deaths. All eyes are now on the director of public prosecutions. The Prime Minister says the filing of charges against any police officer lies with her office. Alison Kentish, Telesur, Castries, St. Lucia.